Oh my gosh. I didn't scare you away in the first Japan video. Well, buckle up because it's going to be a crazy second Japan adventure. Well, uh, sorta, I mean, I was kind of on a, a budget, bruh. Buckle up for a semi-satisfactory Japan adventure. Now, before we get into the video, I'm going to waste your time. What? Introductions. My name is Swinkles, and this is Bippy Lou, my, my wannabe mustache. This is a sequel to the first Japan video. Now, after you watch this video, go watch the first one. Watch them out of order. I don't, I don't give a shit. See, this video is to document the latter five days of my Japan trip. And I want you guys to, to leave a like if you like the film Karate Kid, which is relevant because it's Asian. And I want you guys to watch to the end of the video. I met a celebrity in Japan. You guys, I want you to see what it is. Wait to the end of the video to see which celebrity I met. I actually didn't meet a celebrity. I watch watch the video to the end out of pity for me. Day six. <laughs> now, guys, as freaking amazing as these owls were, they did not actually happen at day five. Those actually come at a later date. Uh, this meerkat was as well in the owl cafe that I went to, but. Day five was fairly boring, and I'm just, I'm just gonna summarize it really quickly. I did nothing. I had a lot of action-packed days that were in the previous video. Day five was kind of my rest day. I did a lot of walks to just go get food, and that's all I did. Now, the whole concept of day five was, of course, killing time. So, I bought some, from the local fish markets, I bought some octopus like you can see here. And I made them into this. I did that all myself. It looked really nice. It required lots of soy sauce, but you know, this octopus was fairly enjoyable. I walked around the sky tree, saw this beautiful pie place amongst... I just tried a bunch of free samples is really what I did. For more on the sky tree, of course, watch the first video. I spent like the whole time at the sky tree. Then for dessert dinner, I had my eye on this really fancy chocolate shop that had fondue. This is uh, the dish I got. It was a dessert pizza and a white chocolate chai. This place was really fun. Now, I was mad because I didn't get this. Uh, when I ordered the white chocolate chai, I wanted the hug mug, and that's what I came for. Uh, actually, day six, I ended up getting one of these, and I got a, uh, this is the, the Italian thick that I got. It's a, a special hug mug hot chocolate from the Max Brenner Chocolate Shop. Day seven. Now, after the Uena Zoo in a previous video, I was like, this is the peak amount of happiness that I'll have in Japan. Which was, it was pretty much true. There was the, the last day I was there at the Owl Cafe, came pretty close. But day after day six, which was fairly, fairly uneventful, it was fun, fairly uneventful. I was not going into day seven with high hopes. Little did I know how freaking amazing it was. I discovered a new market, actually. That I had, it was, it was like a, it was like a whole little street market that I had never seen before. I spent the entire morning just browsing around this market. I went searching for pastries, and this market had a special red bean paste pastry, but unfortunately, I didn't get to see that until days later. These markets, I mean, the, the stores in the market was were not open. I did see a really cool temple, which I've got B-roll of here with all these statues, and of course, there's the temple there. I ended up having to go to the Sky Tree for breakfast, I had two pastries this day, don't judge. And then I ended up checking out the aquarium. 
Now this aquarium was amazing. These these penguins were were just right, and you were right there, and you were able to almost. I could have touched one of them eventually. In fact, they were close enough that I could have stuck my hand in, stole a penguin, and took it home so that my little dog could have some friends. This this aquarium was amazing. Amazing if. The only thing you wanted to see was penguins, because that was pretty much all you're going to see. It, uh, the cool part of this aquarium was it was inside of the sky tree, so that was a plus. But there was like, there was not much to see other than the penguins. You had the jellies, the jellyfish. You, have, uh, you got to see sharks, but it was very small. You could get through it all in a half an hour if you really tried. I was there for a couple hours, but I mean, I just, I, I, I was just hanging out, took my time. And again, I want to preface, this aquarium was amazing. Amazingly small, though. And I think I would have enjoyed it more if I hadn't just paid $8 to go to the Ueno Zoo, which was much bigger and I had more fun in. Still, again, this, this one's worth doing. It's just, just do this before you go to the Ueno Zoo, because the Ueno Zoo is much better value, and you get to see more. Now, this is, of course, the giant shark tank that they had. And I'm telling you, it's this shark tank. You get to see the jellyfish as you walk in. And then there's tiny little exhibits that were really cool. They were just really small. They had, like, goldfish that I could buy at the, at the grocery store. Now, the really cool part about this aquarium was the day I came in, I came in at the exact right day, at the exact right time. They were showing off baby penguins. Now, I felt a love for these penguins. This penguin that would make my little dog jealous. I'm sorry, Gabby. I love you too, but these were adorable. I, I really wanted to steal them. But hey, that was the aquarium. And day seven's lunch was fried oysters. Oh my gosh. It was so unique. You have to try fried oysters if you ever get a chance. And then, of course, I had that the after lunch dessert, which was the Max Brenner hot chocolate. Bald man, Max Brenner hot chocolate. And it was it was amazing, I loved it. Afterwards, I went looking around back at that, that newly found market. This is a cool little coffee shop that I found on day nine. This was a pumpkin pastry I tried as a snack. And then I went back to the sky tree and had some udon noodles with fried crunchies on the top. And my gosh, I am a glutton. I know, I'm a giant fat ass. Day 8. Now, the whole, the whole thing around day 8 was I realized, oh my gosh, this trip is about to end and I'm, I'm running out of money but I need to eat food because this is going, I mean, I'm leaving soon. I had to try everything that I wanted to eat before I left. Now, this is the cream cheese pastry I had my eye on for some time. I finally tried it on day eight because I was, again, running out of time. Oh, wait a second. This guy did not arrive until day nine. That's when I went to the Owl Cafe. Back to day eight. All right, I went back to the Sky Tree. Uh, these are some eels. It's something that was too expensive for me. I went and started looking at the high-end restaurants in the Sky Tree, and I actually didn't get any of it. I circled all the way back to the fish, the, not the fish market, the market in, in uh, the Asokasa or whatever market, and I ended up trying a crazy cool sushi place for lunch. This was a conveyor belt sushi restaurant where you literally just pick up whatever you plate you want and you just take it and you eat it. The way that you pay for this is the plates are different colors and each color is designated a price. So if you take a plate of a certain price, uh, you're going to add up all of your plates. You'll have one of the employees count them up and then you'll pay that rate at the end. But it was a really fun experience. You get free matcha at this restaurant. Of course, soy sauce. Every place has soy sauce. What are you thinking, silly Jacob? And this is a closer look at the, the plates that I speak of. And from here I go looking around at pastry shops because 
I love pastry shops. I ended up getting a chocolate croissant, and oh my gosh, it was such, such a fat ass these last couple days of the trip. Not only did I get a croissant, but I also got, I also got an entire pack of milk, uh, milkies, which are, are Japanese condensed milk candies. They're so good if you ever get a chance to try them. But that wasn't even my dinner. I had dinner as well. Now, my dinner was uh, sweet potato ice cream, which I did have, but, uh, but just kidding, that, that was not at my actual dinner. I had another dinner. It was one of my last days, so I had some spicy udon again. Day nine, baby! Now, day nine was unquestionably the best of the, of the latter five days of the trip. It was a packed day, really. Uh, I packed my bag, which was a big problem because I had one tiny little backpack, but I made it work. I made it work because I'm kind of awesome, really. Then I went from my morning trip, uh, my morning walk, and I went in a completely other direction again past the market that I found. I found this, this cool little, this little coffee equipment shop. I enjoyed this beautiful Japanese omelet for breakfast, although it was supposed to have demi-gloss. It was a it was a cheap package for this all this. I got the toast, the salad, everything for four bucks. And now after I was done eating, I actually found a super cool owl cafe. And this was actually just my morning activity. Don't get me wrong, I could have spent a ton of time in here. It had plenty of animals to look at for days. It was much more than just owls. There was a uh, there was a, a duck in there all kinds of different cool birds, one with like this crazy weird looking cool beak. They had uh, hedgehogs and such. And now the super cool part about this Owl Cafe is it had this awesome, awesome coffee machine, two of them at the end of the thing. Now I got coffee unlimited for free with the inclusion of price of admission to this. And it should be said, I also got to stay in here as long as I felt like there was no time limit. Now this guy is the coffee machine. It had a ton of options. You could have foam, you could not have foam, whipped cream or whatever. Uh, the thing I got most of the time was this white chocolate mocha, but what you're seeing in the video is actually a hot cocoa. Now what you're seeing on the inside of the machine, which I'll speed it up, is actually the way this machine makes the coffee. It foams the milk, does this really cool thing to seal the container. It's pretty darn cool, and it just pops out down there. Now, after I get done with the majesty of those beautiful animals, uh, I actually go back to Uenu again. I know, I love Uenu so much. And this was uh, a, a big park that they had, and I walked up, and this is something I had been intending to do for a long time, is go to the Uenu Museum. And unfortunately, on the last day I could have went, the Uenu Museum was closed. So I had to quickly switch directions, and I actually uh, I decided to just get on the train because I had an unlimited train pass, and I went to Ginza. Now, if you ever get a chance to go to Ginza, this is the this is like the epitome of luxury. Tallest buildings I saw in all of Tokyo, which is saying something because Tokyo has some big buildings. This was a, a car store, I guess, Nissan, I guess. It was a Nissan store. They had some cool stuff here, that luxurious car as well. Uh, around somewhere, you're going to have this ginormous Apple store, the biggest Apple store I have ever seen. Now, all I did was walk around Ginza because everything was so far out of my price range. It was ridiculous. It's just a giant mall everywhere you go. It's like a, a different mall is every other building. It's like freaking over five stories tall. The first building I arrived in had the subway that I arrived at beneath it. So I just walked into this mall and this mall had, I kid you not, a $500 coffee cup in there. So I bought nothing and I just kind of walked, or actually I did buy a can of coffee for a dollar so I could say that I bought something in the most expensive place in the world probably. This is Ginza 6. Now, Ginza 6 is the most famous place in, in Ginza. It's the, the highest value building in the entire place. It was very cool. They had a Starbucks Reserve upstairs, which you're looking at right now. And the Starbucks Reserve is a very special, special Starbucks restaurant. It has coffee brewed in all kinds of different unique ways. 
One is brewed uh, cold, and it's actually uh, made in a very similar way to beer, believe it or not. Another one is is this cool-looking orb, and it's it's just all kinds of unique ways that they had coffee brewing up here. It was it was really an experience to get to see the special Starbucks restaurant, and you have to get a certification to work here. It's not like your just average Joe is able to work here. It's very hard to to become a barista at this specific location. And you can tell by the black aprons. And that is just one way that the coffee was made. So yeah, it was the Starbucks was incredible. And of course, there's a sword shop up top here at Ginza 6-2. But anyways, that was Ginza. This is actually the rooftop garden at Ginza 6. And this was a pretty, pretty emotional moment for me. This was a beautiful place for me to see. I could actually see the sky tree from here. What uh, you just saw was the, the Tokyo Tower. I don't even remember what that thing was called. But it was a special moment. I got to remember everything that I did and know that the, the trip was ending. So I had a very special moment on top of the beautiful Ginza Six Gardens. And then it was, it was time to go back, have my last spicy udon at the sky tree and then pack my bags and get ready for departure in the morning. Day 10. All right, this video is freaking long enough, wouldn't you say? I'm gonna keep day 10 real short. It was a living hell getting from A to B, getting from my hostel to my house, and fighting my way through a lot of fat passengers in, in the airport. So I'm glad that that day is over. That day sucked. But hey, that's the end of my trip. That was Japan the last five days. Thanks for getting through this far, guys. That was part two, the latter five days of my Japan trip. And I want you guys to know, I am humbled and appreciative that you guys made it this far. I award you five golden chopsticks for getting this far. If you guys like the video, please check out my other shit. And, and I mean, if it's not for you, I understand. I don't understand. If you remotely liked the video, uh, please give me a chance and subscribe. You really, you don't have an idea, you don't understand how appreciative I would be. And you don't even have to start with this one, uh, just, just check out the channel. If you like the stuff on my channel, you know, who knows, do, maybe do something nice for today, for me. So I really would appreciate it. Please leave a comment. Uh, I need you to know how much I love you and how much I want to talk to you. And here's the cool part. If I get to have communications with people over the internet, then I won't have to have, like, real relationships, which is the goal that we all have, is to play video games and sit in a chair. Uh, leave a comment on what you think Godzilla tastes like. It's relevant because Japan. <laughs>